Hello, hello, welcome back to the channel where healing and spiritual growth are front and center. This video shout out goes to Jason Parker. Thank you for your continued support. Well, the question is a good one. And I want to go ahead and say this goes pretty good with discarding part one and two. If you haven't already seen those, I highly recommend it. Because, again, the narcissists are not the ones who do the discard. They don't do the final discard. So, that being said, why do narcissists ghost you suddenly? There's a couple parts to this we want to break down. Okay? Because it ties into how they block and unblock and block and unblock. How they play those games. Okay? Ghosting. <laughs> they don't ghost suddenly in the way that you would think okay <sighs> see if i could find the best way to break it down was well, not confusing because there is a lot of that again that flip the script they're trying to make the empaths the ones who have to actually do the final discard okay we the empaths are the ones that have to go no contact and so the reason for that is all throughout scripture god Invented the no contact rules, like I said in the previous video. He was brilliant, right? Hmm. Okay. They will. All uh, right. Let's say a narcissist gets mad at you. All uh, right, and that's quite often, right? Yes, the narcissistic abuser gets mad, especially when they don't get their way, right? Okay. So they will, if they feel like it, and they'll kind of do what they, what I would like to call a temporary ghost. Or they fall off, you know, they take off for hours at a time and don't, they just don't tell you where they're going or anything like that. But then they come, and then they come back four or five, six hours later acting like nothing happened. <laughs> okay, so that's so common. But that's one type of ghosting, if you will. But it's not necessarily sudden. It's like they already, the narcissists already have this stuff planned. Okay, they do. It's like they know when they get up in the morning, they're like, they have it in their ism mindset. Exactly what they want to do. Exactly what they're after. Uh, you know, whatever they, they want. to. They are looking for whatever they can find to stroke their ego. And then say you come along and you don't follow a script that they had already planned out in their vain imagination. And then they'll be like, uh, because they'll know. You see what I'm saying? The narcissistic abusers will know at some point when you're just not going to go along with something or you'll be like, uh, no. And remember, they don't like to be told no. So they will purposely do something that they know you'll say no to just so that they can do the temporary ghosting and use that as an excuse to get mad at you. It's crazy. It's all part of that crazy making, okay? But that's how they'll do it. And then they'll... But they come back. So they don't... You can't really say they ghost. Because if they did, then they would never come back. See how that works? I mean, ghosting is just... Is that. It's that blocking and that deleting and done with it. And you don't go back. That is what ghosting is. And empaths are the ones that often have to do that. Unfortunately, we're the ones that have to do that. Because if we don't... Now, mind you, remember, like I said in another video, if the narcissistic abuser did block you or quote-unquote ghost you first, just give it a little time. Don't... I mean, it's like, don't be obsessive over... But as soon as you notice when they unblock you, that's when you need to jump in and make sure you block them so that they can't keep playing that. Okay? Because they do. All of them do it. They do it all the time. And so, a, a bunch of those behaviors... That they do. And I talk about that in Narcissist Online Part 1 and 2. And also a little bit in the video about narcissists and social media. Now, that, that and they do it. It's, a, it's like they, all of them do it. Every single one of them will play these shenanigans. But they will not actually go in and fully ghost you. Because, like I said before, if they did ghost, then they would have never, they, they would not hoover. They would not try to win you back okay they would not try to 
come back into your life after so many years. I mean, think about that. And many of them do it. It can be six, seven, eight, nine, ten years down the road. And they'll try to, they're hoping that you forgot. They're hoping that you forgot the abuse that they put you through. But they underestimate you every time, don't they? They underestimate us. That's the other thing that the narcissistic abusers do. That's why they get themselves exposed. That's why they expose themselves. Because they keep underestimating everyone else. But if they truly ghosted, then they wouldn't come back ever. That's the meaning of ghosting right there. It's just cut off all contact. You're done. You walk away and you don't look back. But the narcissist, remember, they live in the past. They literally live in the past. They cling to their childhood. I speak about that often for a reason because it's important. They do. They don't want to grow up. They don't want to grow up. And it also ties into if they ghosted you, uh, if they truly ghosted you, then you would have no reason to hear from them. Now, I understand. I'm not talking about those that have to unfortunately, okay, unfortunately co-parent with one. I know that's tough. And, but you do the best you can. I know. I know. Limited contact. Obviously. But there will come a time later on where you will be able to just have, you know, contact with your kids. If you, if you have not been alienated from your children, hopefully not. Unfortunately, many do. But there will come a time where from the actual narcissistic abuser themselves, you will be able to go no contact at some point, okay, in the future, at some point, and, you know, y'all, y'all are good, you know, y'all are really good at figuring it out, there's tons of different avenues out there that, to help you with that, but I, for those of us who are able to just go 100% no contact, we're the ones that do the ghosting, because the narcissist will, and, that's all part of being vigilant and aware, too, because if we're not careful, they will try to sneak, or I guess you can say, slither the way back in. So we always have to be mindful, especially if we are expanding the online presence, okay? We want to also be mindful of that as well. And so keeping tabs on, but see, what they're hoping is that you'll forget, all right? They're hoping that you'll forget about all of the abuse they put you through, and then, if, it, if, 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 if it's not them themselves, okay, it could be a family member or a flying monkey. So, I keep that in mind, too. That's why we advise, if you can go 100% no contact, to do it. And then, also, to go 100% no contact with any mutual acquaintances, family members, whatever, okay? So, for example, like, some from, you know, some ex-narcissistic abusers of mine... They, I still had numbers. <laughs> I, it dawned on me after. I was like, wait a minute. Why do I still have this number? But anyway, uh, it, this was a while ago. This is before the most recent few narcissistic situations that I got out of. But this was long before that. And so I realized that I had this person's number that I really didn't need to be. I didn't need to be communicating with her anymore. Because we were done. And I realized what was going on is that every once in a while when, when she'd reach out on, not necessarily on his behalf, but on the narcissistic abuser's behalf, but it didn't dawn on me that that was the way the information would be getting back to him. So, but I had to learn that myself. So we always want to be mindful of that. And I'm talking, this has been years, right? I mean, I, he and I have split for, oh gosh, five, six years by now. We were already split, but I still had her number. And every once in a while, because, I mean, I, I didn't know at that time about the whole flying monkey thing. But I was, like, really trying to figure out, oh, it's like, how is inform why, how would information still be getting back to him anyway? And at that time, I didn't have a large online presence, you see? So, it, it took a little bit, but the importance of cutting off all that, because... Whatever information you feed that flying monkey, whether they know, remember, some flying monkeys don't know that they're a flying monkey. All right? So, that's another, you know what, y'all? That's another great way to think about it. If they were going to, if they actually ghosted you, why would they send a flying monkey to get information from you? Hmm? Stop and think about it. That's like something out of, or like, oh, I don't know, crazy world, right? 
Because if they truly ghosted you, then they wouldn't have any care or reason to keep tabs on you through their flying monkeys. And they send their flying monkeys to see what you're up to or to see what you might say about them. So they didn't really ghost you if they're sending their flying monkey after you. Okay? So stop and think. <laughs> that makes absolutely no sense. So they didn't really ghost you. They might have done it, you know, for themselves. But if they're still sending their flying monkeys, then that's not that's not a ghost. That's not that's still it may be an indirect co way of contacting you, but it's still contacting you. So it's not truly a ghost. So there's all kinds of things that go in that. And as usual, so just keep that in mind that if you find yourself suddenly ghosted. Just give it time as to whether or not you'll know if that was a narcissist or an empath. Give it time. Because an empath, if an empath ghost, you will never hear from that person again. That much I can tell you. Alright? You will never, ever, ever hear anything A peep. We don't have flying monkey. Uh-uh. Because we're like, no, we're done. We're done with that. So, we don't have flying monkey. So it's like whatever the narcissistic abuser is doing after that point, we're we're done. We don't we're not even worried about it. We're not thinking about it. We're not looking back. We're not going back there. We're not gonna ask about them. We don't care anymore. We're moving on. <laughs> we move on. But the narcissistic abusers, they will, even if it's three weeks, three months, four months, four years down the road, the narcissistic abuser will unblock at some point. And you'll catch it. Vigilance and awareness. You'll catch it. And if you catch them unblocking you, then now you know then you'll know what I'm talking about. And remember, like I said earlier, if you if they did that to you first and you didn't get a chance to block them first, then go ahead and if you catch it quick enough, then you can block them. So they can't play that game. Alright, everyone. So that's it for today. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for watching and for your support. Until next time, let's show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father. And you keep being you. In Jesus' name, amen.